it's uh, 610 or 611 and we're going to get the meeting started. Um, today on our agenda we are going to be having some policy discussions and decisions um, primarily and uh, before we get started I need a board member to do the evaluation of the meeting. So do I have a member who would be willing to do that? Okay. Oh, and you have one already. Perfect. Okay. Um, so uh, we are going to start as as usual with public comment. Again, for the public's information, when we have public comment, the board is not going to be responding to your comments. That's the way public comment is set up. Um, we would appreciate if someone has already made the comment that you would like to make. It's important for us to know that you agree with that comment. So you can stand and say, I agree with what so-and-so said. Um, and then sit back down that way we're just for timing purposes because we do have work that we need to accomplish um, and as I mentioned at the last meeting we do have a complaint procedure that is on our website so if you do have some issues that you are concerned about look at that poly that procedure if you have questions with it please contact me if you if you don't understand what you're supposed to do um, and uh, we can help you uh, maneuver in in the system that we've set up so um, at this point I'm going to open up for public comment you're going to get uh, approximately three minutes to speak um, and my co-chair is going to try and keep me uh, on task to make sure that I, I, I cut people off. I will try and do a time signal so that um, you know that your time is, is coming toward the end. I will give you that time signal a little bit before we hit that three minute mark. So we have some folks. So Kara. Um, hi, my name is Kara Merrill, and I've been one of the school counselors at RU for the last 15 years. First, I want to thank this community for always making me feel like a part of the Randolph, Braintree, and Brookfield communities. I can't express the gratitude that I experience every day when I come to work feeling a sense of joy and love for my job. This is a direct correlation to the students and families with which I work. So it is not for me that I necessarily stand in front of you today. It is in solidarity with 15 years of students who have, whom I have come to know and love. Part of the work of a school counselor is to help students with their college applications, which includes the writing of personal essays. In six years of doing post-secondary planning with students, quite literally every student of color has written about their experiences of race within the Randolph school system. I am using the words from one of these college essays now. Some of my teammates even told me, you're not black, you can't say anything. When I was told this, it made me feel broken. It made me think back to the question of, am I black or am I white? This time it was an even harder question. My skin is clearly not white, but I am clearly not brown. Now as a senior, I want to do more. I want to help my school value the little diversity we have. So I've joined the Racial Justice PBL we are currently trying to raise a Black Lives Matter flag. We want to show the support of all people, including the Black Lives of Randolph, Vermont. Furthermore, I am sharing my own experiences with my class in the wider Randolph commu school community in hopes of creating change. Clearly, this essay was written before the BLM flag was raised. However, I want to speak to one specific point this person made. The student says we, the Racial Justice PBL, wants to show the support of all people, including the Black Lives of Randolph. Over the last seven weeks, I have been co-teaching in the English 9 class about consent using an evidence-based curriculum developed by Prevent Child Abuse Vermont as instructed by the Vermont Legislature as part of Act 1. This curriculum focuses on several preventative measures, one being how do we show support? The curriculum boils it down to three really basic things that we should acknowledge for people who are struggling. 
One, I believe you. Two, it's not your fault. And three, you are not alone. It is my belief that the BLM flag shows these basic tenets of support to our past, present, and future students who have felt marginalized and are in need of our support. I ask you to consider how hard our students work to be engaged citizens of a democracy and raise a flag that continues to this day to show support. I ask you to consider the second option for flags on flagpole that are student motivated, initiated, and followed with a procedure. Okay, John. Thanks. I gotta get to a soccer game, so I appreciate you letting me go now. I wanna talk about flag policy. I think the policy should adopt the one that only allows a US and Vermont flag. And this is why. And it may not seem like it, people will listen to me talk, but my argument is protectionist for minority students, in fact, for all students. Um, when you look at Shirtleff versus Boston, the US Supreme Court decision that came out, once you allow one flag other than those governmental flags to fly, you have to allow all other flags to fly. Otherwise, uh, we face serious litigation here at, at the Southwest School District. So when you take that case into account, somebody comes along with what we would all consider an offensive flag, you're not going to be able to pick and choose what's offensive. You're just going to have to let it fly if you leave the BLM flag up. So it really doesn't matter about the emotions of the BLM flag anymore. Whether you like it or whether you're against it, it, it just doesn't matter when you read that decision. You have to let other flags fly. And they may be flags you don't want here, that I don't want here. And then when you take into account State of Vermont versus Schenck, which said that hate speech was free speech, and, and, and I just want to describe that case. That was a man going around putting KKK uh, pamphlets on minority women's doors in Burlington. Horrible. But the state of Vermont, the Supreme Court said, that's free speech. So when you take those two cases and you put them together, if the board doesn't pass a policy that only allows a US and Vermont flag, I, I don't know what flag you're gonna end up with up there. And I, I hear what Kara said, but that's not what the U.S. Supreme Court said. Uh, you can't just say it's, you know, with student input and, 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 and all of that. It, it just won't work. The U.S. Supreme Court 9-0, 9-0, it's unheard of, um, said free speech is free speech. You fly one flag, you got to fly any flag. So I, I really think the board needs to go with the policy of a Vermont U.S. flag only. Um, dive in real quick to one other thing. I think this takes a step further and when you look at speech at the open forum we were talking about the let's go Brandon phrase and how students were disciplined for that. I think this same argument is going to apply there in the future. I think it's coming. The courts have really opened up on free speech um, and I think the school has to be really careful to pick winners and losers on speech, uh, paraphernalia on shirts, flags, um, you either got to open it all the way up or shut it all the way down. Um, and I, I just, I think opening it all the way up is a really bad idea in the school district. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. I got to run. Have a good night, everybody. Okay, sure. Identify yourself, please. John Clark. Okay. I'll sit. Is that all right? Sure. So I spoke at the last hearing and I emphasized the unconstitutionality of it, notwithstanding the sentiments of others. In a democracy, both sides need to be heard by government. All sides are none, especially in schools. And I actually agree that schools have a special difficulty, and I don't envy your jobs trying to find that balance. And historically, schools are a little different. But the rule still applies that the government can't favor one form of speech over another. The BLM flag is a, a very obviously liberal democratic uh, flag that represents a rather far left liberalism, in fact. It's not even traditional liberalism. And it's being embraced as if it's enlightened but it is not. BLM also proposes to have hormone therapy for minor children behind their parents' backs. They support a whole litany of very political policies, okay? It's not just a sentiment that we want to help black people. If you had put a, a, a Martin Luther King flag up at this school, you would not have had the conflict that has resulted. Am I right? Because we who are called racist for supporting Martin Luther King are embracing the liberalism of the 60s and 70s that was also the Supreme Court laws that established that people actually have the right to fly a swastika or burn an American flag, 
or yes, even have a Confederate flag. So what disturbs me as a free speech attorney who's worked in this for a long time, and I, I won't go into my credentials, we'll go, perhaps we'll be talking about this some more. I've brought a case to the United States Supreme Court. I know what the free speech cases are. It doesn't seem they're being discussed very much. But let's talk about some other children's experiences because anecdotally, I've been hearing a lot about one side. I talked to a student from Randolph recently who told me how horrified she was when somebody came up and draped a cloak over their mascot and said, this is racist, because she never saw it that way. She didn't come in as a white supremacist. I'm sure she doesn't support white supremacy, and I don't think anybody here does. So when people are called racist simply for opposing a blatantly political symbol, and what's interesting to me is when I came here two weeks ago, or whatever it was, it was already illegal. Six years ago it was illegal. The Supreme Court now has said nine to zero, really clear. This never should have happened. There's no discussion about, oh, my sentiments override the Constitution. In democracy, the center is free speech for all. You get to listen to people you don't like or nobody. And to pick out, we don't like, let's go Brandon because it's profane, while making a reference to Donald Trump in a speech that's supposed to be a truce discussion last week. Right? That's, the, the parents got lambasted last week. I watched the superintendent blame the community for the division that's been caused by violating the First Amendment. These kids know what their rights are. Their rights have been violated, okay? And the government is not to determine what everything means. Oh, that Confederate flag isn't what you says it means, it's what we say it means. Oh, that says there are only two genders. We're gonna actually override that science with our social justice program. You don't get to pick both sides in a political dispute. And that's what's been happening far beyond the flag. I'm now seeing it's in the curricula, overtly partisan content. So at any rate, there are a lot of students that don't approve of this. Their voices haven't been heard. Thank and you very who's much. who's responsible for what the Thank BLM you. message? Well, she went quite over, but who's no, responsible for the BLM message? No, she That's didn't. That's all I'm and saying. I... It's a gray message. Okay, shouldn't be in a school. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. OK, do we have another person? Dana? Hi. I took notes from John and I wrote all my thoughts down. Um, I sent a lot, I'm Dana, I'm a parent at RES and I work here as an educator. I sent a letter to the board at the end of April expressing my concern of taking down the BLM flag. I'm here today to ask that you please consider a second option for flags on flagpoles that um, are student motivated, initiated, and followed with a procedure. I read what Superintendent Millington stated about the Supreme Court case and I will have to disagree with the decision and the comparison. There is a difference in that case compared to the flag flying at our school. That difference is the protocol and procedure used to fly that flag. The procedures that our students com completed took a lot of time. Now we have a case that could dictate what we can or can't fly. I think it is important to consult other districts. We need to slow down not make a decision too fast. We should consult with the VPA, VSBA, AOE, and other organizations. Then we can move forward in solidarity. After talking with John Lacey, who works over at RTCC, we discussed this for many hours um, after school and before school. Um, the case in Boston was about flagpoles out front and whether or not the message they carried was government speech or private speech. You see, government speech can have restrictions more so than private speech. The US Supreme Court ruled that the way the flagpole situation was run in Boston basically was one person in an office who said yes or no to the flags. So therefore, it was not government speech, but rather private speech. And because of that, they really couldn't say no. We have certain rules and policies that protect our school. There are multiple Supreme Court cases that state that schools have the right to, di to disagree or limit expressions that is disruptive to the education or the mission of the school. I do believe that the flag being taken down may be solely on the grounds of the board and or superintendent feeling like it's divisive. If that is the case, I think you need to clearly state that this is the reason. That is setting our students up with reasoning that comes from truth, and truth is power. Like I noted in my email to you, I'm requesting that we have time to meet and or go over this process before you make any final decisions around removing the flag. I'm asking you to slow down. I'm also asking you to follow through with Emily Therian's request to come into our school and discuss with our 
students their experiences before any decisions are made. I invite you to start in my racial justice class. We meet four days a week. Lastly, Mr. Millington, you have said several times that this passion of this anti-racism work could be just as divisive as the right opposition in this community. I'm here tonight to tell you that in fact, my passion is not divisive. This passion comes from love. This passion comes from openness. This passion comes from change and change is hard. Thank you. Do we have someone else who'd like to speak? Just I, a quick, how, when did the flag can go you, up? Oh, can you uh, first identify yourself? Chris Hurley, down Brain Tree. When did the flag go up? Uh, Two or three years probably, right? Yeah. Dana, do you know? Do you 2019. Know? 2019. Has that not been long enough to see the division in the community? I mean, I'm not here for the flag, I'm here for the Chick fil A, but haven't we seen enough division over it? I think there's more work to do, and I think that flag brings conversation. I don't think we're allowed to have conversations with each other. Okay, I'm okay. sorry. I am sure. willing I'm to. Sorry, sorry guys. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not following my, no, my own fine. rules. I can't have conversation sure, back and forth. Sorry, I forgot that. No, <laughs> I get sorry. involved, and then I and then I forget the protocol. So, um, if you if you want to speak outside, yeah, you you Any may. Time, um, but we can't have discussion during public comment. So do we have anyone else who would like to speak? Go ahead. Name, uh, your Jamaica name? Jamaica Kelly, and I just would like to echo, I've been working with kids for the last 20 years, and um, kids of all races, and um, as um, Kara. Kara, thank you, Kara and Dana have said, um, it's, I, I guess I'll just say that I, I agree with them and that I have seen how hard it is. And I also want to make sure that, you know, that there are no kids that are feeling like they can't speak out as well. You know, if they're, I don't want any child to feel like they are being, you know, if they can't say, speak their own beliefs or they feel like their beloved mascot is, Know, I, I think that there's ways to work together so that nobody has to feel singled out, isolated, or um, or or uncomfortable. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, Kristen. I'm Kristen Chandler. I'm a parent of an alumni from this school and a parent of a current student. And I just want to say I support keeping the Black Lives Matter flag flying and support the students' efforts at initially raising it in 2019. Thank you. Kathleen. <clears throat> My name's Kathleen Mason. I have three children at the uh, Middle and High School. And I just wanted to say I concur with data uh, and that slowing down and seeking advice from Agency of Education and other school districts to see how this policy does in fact impact schools uh, versus a government institution I think would be wise that rushing through these decisions can have an incredible impact that we don't understand uh, what it could mean if you rush through these decisions at this point. So slowing down would be a great idea. Thank you. Do we have another comment? Any online? Oh, yeah, I haven't been following the online. Do we have folks online? Any hands up? Oh. Any, anyone Any online with hands up? Yeah, we've got one here. Okay, just one moment. The, no hands up? Okay. Uh. Please uh, state I your name, I'm please. I'm a senior at the high school. I've heard Sir Lethby Boston use as a reason to take the flag down multiple times this meeting, and I'd like to talk about it. Your arguments for the flag being taken down have been tenuous at best, and most of what you say or write is entirely incorrect. 
In the most recent flag policy, you write, the Supreme Court has made its findings in the Boston flag case. In a 9-0 vote, they have unequivocally stated that flying a non-governmental flag establishes the pole on which it is flown as a public forum for free speech. This sentiment, however, nor anything adjacent to it has ever been stated by any Supreme Court justice. It has actually been quite the opposite. Justice Breyer states, the parties dispute whether on these facts, Boston reserved the poll to fly flags that communicate governmental messages or instead open the flagpole for citizens to express their own views. If the former, Boston is free to choose the flags it flies without the constraints of the First Amendment's free speech clause. And then he later goes on to say, the first and basic question we must answer is whether Boston's flag raising program constitutes government speech. If so, go uh, Boston may refuse flags based on viewpoint. The First Amendment's free speech clause does not prevent the government from declining to express a view. Based on these two pieces of information, we can conclude that flying a non-governmental flag constitutes either government speech or opens the flagpole for citizens to express their own views. If the former, then a, for a public forum is not created despite the flying of a non-governmental flag. Additionally, you say further, any policy that through any means or process allows the district to accept some flags and not others causes the same problem. I'd like to talk about flag policies. On this, the Supreme Court also agrees with me, with Justice Breyer stating, Boston could easily have done more to make it clear it wished to speak for itself by raising flags. Other cities' flag, uh, flag flying policies support our conclusion. The city of San Jose, California, for example, provides in writing that its flagpoles are not intended to serve as a forum for free expression by the public and lists approved flags that may be flown as an expression of the city's official sentiments. In the flag policy of San Jose, there is a section about ceremonial flags, which for all intents and purposes is the most similar to our situation. The flag policy states that these flags may be flown. Flags of governments recognized by the United States, flags of sister cities, flags displayed in conjunction with official ceremonial items. Other flags may be displayed in conjunction with official actions, ceremonial items, or proclamations of the city council, and four, flags of uh, professional sports teams. Despite these being non-governmental flags, San Jose is still able to fly them due to the restrictions placed on which flags can and cannot, be, can and cannot fly. Additionally, Justice Breyer states that nothing prevents Boston from changing its policies going forward. Based on the opinion of the Supreme Court then, one could easily create a new flag policy either similar in nature to the one used by San Jose or similar to the one Dana suggested, whereby to hang a flag, a student-led procedure must be enacted, the same as the process used to hang the Black Lives Matter flag. In his writing, Breyer also states the city employee who handled applications testified by deposition that he had previously never requested to review a flag or requested changes to a flag in connection with approval, okay, nor did sorry, he Sorry, we're coming to sorry. the end. Okay, I'll, I just want to yep, quickly just end by quick, saying this. End. Based on all the information stated so far, it seems one can conclude that not only is the flagpole as it stands currently not a public forum, but if the school cared both about the flag itself and were truly worried about the legal aspect, they could easily create a new flag policy that addresses all issues previously stated. Okay, without yeah, all right. <laughs> Sorry, I gotta cut yeah, you there. Okay, uh, excuse us. We're not going to be talking amongst ourselves. If you need to have a conversation, you can ask someone if they'll speak with you outside. Government can't fly a swastika. I'm just saying. Government speaks. We doesn't I have not acknowledged you. I'm That's fine, sorry. but everybody else heard me. It doesn't I'm, hurt. I'm sorry. Or political. Okay, problem. if you can't follow the rules, I'm going to have to ask no, you to leave. I'm sorry. Okay. Dana, same, same thing. We've got to keep it civil here. Um, so do we have any other comments online? No one online? No, I'm sorry. I'm trying to speak. Okay. Are we are we having trouble with the online? Are they no. able to hear us? Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. They can see you too. Okay, not seeing, not seeing any other comments. Um, I'm going to move on to the next agenda item, uh, which is uh, about our training. So um, remember, board members, that is going to be um, Wednesday, June 1st, from 5.30 to 8.00. And I have been in touch with our trainer, that's um, Jackie Wilson, I believe it's Wilson, <laughs> Jackie. Um, 
and uh, we need to have um, the, our board self-evaluation done. She had, she had sent it out to everyone. I think there's only two board members that need to um, do that. So, and new board members, so the new, new board members, we're not having you do that <laughs> because you haven't had enough time on the board yet. So don't worry if, if you haven't seen that, we, you were left off. <laughs> so um, no worries. But if you got that email from Jackie, please um, make sure you, you, uh, you do that uh, board self-evaluation. And then uh, the time frame that we have is from 5.30 to 8. Um, and I'm just checking, yeah, I wanted to check in with folks to see we can work with RTCC to have some food. Um, would people appreciate that? Yes, at that time we, frame, yeah. At that time frame, I'm figuring snacks like snacks or maybe yeah, even dinner. something a little bit more substantial like dinner. It may just be sandwiches, but it might be hot might be warm and that we, would be great would, would that be during the time frame of the 5 30 to 8 yeah we would yeah be yeah we we'll, we'll be learning and having some food at the same time and it looks like we will be doing that um that training we are looking at doing it over at the tech center in the in the studio not PBA, PBA, no, the other room the fishbowl in the fishbowl room over in the tech center um just because it'll be it'll be easier or we'll it might also be in that PBL room I think we were talking about both of those but anyway any questions will about you, that will you just send an email where that is where is it yeah I I, that. I'm not really familiar with <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah okay so I'll, I'll just make sure that we send send board the directions okay Okay. Um, all right, any other questions about the training? Um, she hasn't mentioned if she's gonna have us reading anything ahead of time. I don't think she will. Um, but it's more sort of um, that self-reflection of how things have been going. And for new board members, you've, you've at least been here for a couple of meetings. So he kind of um, have a sense of how how things have been going. Um, okay. Uh, so next up, uh, we um, every year the district gets audited, um, and we we pick an auditor. But there's a little bit of an issue because we are going to have our auditor this year. Everything has been delayed because of COVID, and they're behind. But the other thing that's going to come up is um, the number of auditors who do uh, school auditing has dropped off. So, Lane, do you want to? Yeah. Um, just give us a little more information. For on what's at least my my time here, um, folks have always used the Father Gil Sagali and Valley um, as the auditor. It's required under state law. They come in usually in the fall, um, September, October. They go through all the financials. And this is one of your kind of direct observation reports that you get um, that's kind of above and beyond. Um, and the problem being um, they're experiencing the same thing that, that most employers are at this point in time. They're having a, a, a large number of people turning over. Um, and so this will be the last year that they will be able to do school audits. Um, a lot of it, we talked with them for a while. Um, it's hard to hire. They're not sure if they can. And then once they do, uh, school audits are highly specialized. It takes years of training um, to be able to do one. And so they are getting out of the, the business. Um, it's, you know, still doing audits, but not for schools. So Robin has been researching who else is out there um, to be able to present to the board um, so that you can make a choice. Um, there are not many um, because all of them are going through the same thing right now. Um, so the choices may be limited, but once we have that narrowed down, we'll present that uh, to the board. So um, our current company is, has been great. They're gonna try to help us out and make sure we get through the next year. 
and then after that the board is probably going to have to make some decisions. Um, part of being a little bit behind and being understaffed, um, the two go hand in hand. So they plan on being here on June 8th um, to provide the audit report to the board um, for the past year. So I don't know if there's more questions or... So for this coming year, we, can, we, we will be able to appoint them in August yeah. or September as our, our uh, auditor. For You've already appointed year. them for next year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but we'll have to, when we do that appointment process next year, you'll have to choose somebody for the following year. Okay. All right. Um, so next on the agenda is uh, the first reading of the Executive Limitations Policy 2.7. That's compensation and benefits monitoring um, for the superintendent. Um, Lane, do you have anything you want to? Yeah, it's, um, there was one note that I wanted to point out on careful reading that, that might be important for the board to recognize um, and whether they want to give a superintendent that kind of control. Uh, but before we get to that, basically the compensations and benefits executive limitation, it controls the contracts and agreements that we enter into with non-unionized uh, employees and also contractors from the outside. Um, and a lot of it is, is set up so that it's making sure that we're paying competitive but not excessive um, you know, costs in terms of the services that we get. So I do report compliance, but I think the one thing that's important to note is that this executive limitation gives the superintendent the authority to change pension benefits without board approval for non-unionized employees. Um, I, I think it's a lot of power to give one person without oversight. Mm -hmm. And so I'll bring that up and uh, that might be... Well, wait a second here. But it says establish or change pension benefits so as to cause unpredictable or unequitable situations. Yeah. But I'm but it puts the power in my hands without But in this monitoring report, if you're making any changes I still I should be compliant. We should be given in getting an, an a, a rationale for why you're doing that. So I, I'm not even sure if I would have to respond if I've changed it as long as I, all, all I would have to say is that, you know, I'm in compliance with. Right. So, so like we I, might want to, if anything, we might want to we'll be, be more to specific board. about that. But that might be something that we talk with Jackie about as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, we could hem you in a little bit more with by specifying a little bit more. I would be comfortable if you did. Okay. So as we read over this one for the second reading, we, we might want to pay attention to that particular part and also look at his interpretation and his rationale for his interpretation for that section um, so that we're clear on um, and, and whether or not we want to, we feel like we need to be more uh, prescriptive about what we want. All right, so, so check number five. Okay, uh, next up, or are there any questions regarding that monitoring report from the board members? No? Okay. Uh, the COVID operating plan, again, the reason this is in here is so that we are aware of any changes and also so that we know that what's in place we're comfortable with in terms of um, the overarching uh, uh, need for Lane to keep everybody safe in the district. So Lane, anything new in that COVID? No, there, there have been, been no changes um, since the last time we met. Um, it's still um, the guidance that we're expected to follow is the general guidance that's provided by the uh, Vermont Department of Health, uh, which hasn't changed. Any board members have questions or concerns? Okay, so we'll move on. Uh, the monthly financial report, again, this is 
our monitoring of the financial conditions of the district. Lane, you want to give us an update? Yeah, this is actually, it's in the, in the board packet, um, fourth page in. First page deals with revenues, um, money that we have coming in, and you're going to see some negative numbers there. Um, on the revenue side of a, a ledger, if you see negative numbers, it means that we are, in our case, that we are still awaiting reimbursements. Um, so we have reimbursements from grants that we're awaiting. We are also awaiting the final tax payments from the three towns. And so all this is covered in more once those, uh, once those do come in. So that shouldn't be concerning to see those there at this, this point in time of the year. Um, at this point uh, in the year, we would expect to have, have spent about 84% of the overall budget. We've spent 68% so far, um, so we are very much in the black and we'll have a surplus at year's end. Um, not as big as previous years, uh, larger, larger than pre-COVID because we're still a little bit flush with um, grant money that is coming in, um, but, but we will have a significant surplus at the end, end of this year. Um, the technology expense line um, looks like it's it's way down. It's not overspent, um, but again, that's another area where um, they purchased a whole lot up front. A lot of this was uh, internet infrastructure, wireless infrastructure for the buildings, and we will be getting a reimbursement from the E-rate grant on that, which will cover all of it. Um, so that will be back back in line where we expect it to be. But other than that, it, the financials look really good, and Robin was in concurrence with that when I spoke with her. Any questions from board members? Okay, seeing none, I will move along. Uh, how about the legislature there in their last week? Yeah, there was, um, I, I included quite a bit in the superintendent's report, but I think the one that I'll talk about um, that's related to this is what hit the Vermont digger. Um, and that had to do with the uh, results of a study that was put out, um, taking a look at the state of Vermont schools, taking a look at the state of facilities. The, the study was really designed to inform the legislature as they begin kind of looking at securing funding for school buildings and renovation projects. It's something that they haven't done for a long time, has provided some, some funding to, to help districts out. Um, the OSSD, kind of in relation to this study, was reported in the Vermont Digger as one of the supervisory unions with the worst school building conditions, um, with its buildings having 90.5% of their useful life having been expended based on the study. And this was a misrepresentation of what that study was designed to kind of look at. The study did not consider maintenance and upgrades in generating these statistics. Um, and to try to correct for the misperceptions that their ranking system caused, uh, the study clearly states it is routine to see well-maintained systems performing longer than their useful lives. Um, the OSSD buildings, okay, just a moment here, have been extremely well-maintained. Um, failed or failing systems have been upgraded and replaced immediately as needed. Uh, they are safe, clean, and conducive environments for learning. That said, to ensure equity with other Vermont districts, it would be highly appropriate for the state to provide assistance so that we can modernize both RTCC and RUHS. And so it is hoped that, uh, you know, the results of that study, that they're going to provide some significant funding. It's actually to our benefit that we were stated this way um, in the press um, because it should put us to the top of the list if we decide that we want to renovate or replace this high school. I don't know if there's other questions on that. I, I Lane, the S-162, um, the, your concern that it could potentially make it hard for us to respond in a timely fashion, that these decisions come to the board. Um, but that would be like a special meeting kind of case, right? I mean, we're, if we're talking about suspension and dismissal, yeah. we wouldn't just wait for the next Hopefully not. Monthly meeting, right. Um, so while I understand the concern, I kind of, we'd make sure we, we, we would respond in a timely fashion. I'm not really all that concerned about it. Other questions? Are there any 
any bills coming up where you're like, oh no, this is going to impact the district, the district's financing in a in a. The only really thing that they way. were scrambling around with today that I'm in the loop on as I was kind of looking at things um, was it wasn't just that they're changing the the funding formula for special education students, which had you know it in the formulas that they gave us at the beginning of the year to kind of plan out our budget. Um, it negatively impacted us by about $200,000. Uh, they did put some language in to try to hold folks harmless. Um, they're gonna, they have another little formula in there where they'll use our average of our last three years, you know, in terms of the money that they were providing us to, to hopefully compensate a little bit about that. But along with the Act 173 budgetary changes, there were changes to how um, students are found eligible for services under individual education plans. Um, the concern that's out there uh, right now, there was a big flurry of activity to try to get people to delay those change in rules um, for another year, was that folks um, within the state, districts and schools, were supposed to have received a fair amount of training from the Agency of Education on how to manage these changes, how to best incorporate them for the, in service of students, and the training has not happened. Um, and so there was a big push today uh, at the legislature, a lot of letters, a lot of phone calls, trying to get people to delay that action, and I think it's going to be delayed, I'm 100% sure. And will that impact, will that, is that something you've already taken into consideration, or is it something? The that, delay or the, the, the changes? The, the delay in that, in that happening? Uh, no, we've been geared up. Um, I give Kayla a tremendous amount of credit. Um, the, the manual on what the changes are is about ye thick. Um, and she has been making a good study of that uh, ever since she started in this position and, and working on and off um, with different pockets of the special educators in and around the district to try to get prepared for that. Um, but it, it is pretty substantial in terms of what the changes are. Uh, facilities report. So this is a reserve fund uh, request mm -hmm. and um, what they are looking for is we started a process um, of building outdoor classroom spaces. Um, you guys had already approved one, I think it was for REH, RES a little while ago. Um, this is for Brookfield. Uh, they had to revise it a little bit from I think what you initially saw um, because the supply line issues have caused the cost to go up. I think the, the, the price jumped either three or four thousand um, dollars. And so we're just looking to make sure that we've got access from um, reserve funds to be able to cover, cover that additional cost and get that work completed. It's already started up at Brookfield. I think they're put, putting the roof on today, last I saw. Mm -hmm. yeah. Isn't there already a pavilion up there? Or some sort of enclosed space outside? The, they have the dugout. Um, up at Brookfield, but I'm not sure if we're talking about the same thing, yeah. or you're seeing the new new one that's being built right now. Oh, there's the pavilion past the playground. Yeah, we used to meet there, the school club. I'm trying. Oh yeah, they yep, yeah, they have a uh, where the picnic tables are. I was thinking more on the athletic fields. It's a little off to more towards the road. So is that used? Uh, they do. Um, they're using. They've been kind of directed to use it a lot this week if they can. Um, because we've kind of had a surge of COVID cases and so we're figuring if we can keep a third of the kids out of the building doing outdoor activities um, at any given time that hopefully in three or four days the surge will settle. Um, so now they'll have those two spaces to use? Yep. They have a, a very strong outdoor curriculum. Um, our preschool teacher who is working now over at Braintree is, a, is an expert. Um, so they will be revamping the curriculum for all the elementary schools to use to be able to use those spaces effectively that are going up. So do all of the schools now have an outdoor Yeah, Brain Cheese is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. You go up behind the building, it's a um, little, little ways up the hill, they've got the fire pit, um, they've got the flaps on a tent that's, that's kind of over a tent, tent sort of flaps you can drop down to be able to use it in the winter. Mm -hmm. um, there's some grading and there's some, some other kind of ex excavation work that has to be done there to kind of complete it. But um, they've been using it for two years now. Uh, I think a lot of it came from a donation, um, a good chunk of it um, at the start of COVID um, at that time. And so we're trying to preserve the equity by making sure that each of the other elementary schools has the same sort of space. Mm -hmm. 
So I make a motion to um, honor this request for $20,500 from the reserve fund. We second that. Seconded by Sarah. Uh, any, dis any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, that passes. Great. Okay. Next up, uh, we have the suggested changes on the uh, Executive Limitation 2.6 Asset Protection, and that was a change in the amount um, that needs to go out to bid, moving that up to the state required amount, which was 40000 um, uh, and we are um, needing to have a, uh, well, any discussion, and then we need to vote to uh, make that change if we'd like to. Uh, so any discussion regarding that? So do we have a motion? Revise policy, yeah, policy 2.6. Okay. I second that. Okay. Um, and I believe, Linda, the, the wording for that policy, Pietro, um, he put that together. It was in our packet from last time. So. If you need that for the notes. It's today. It's in here today. Oh, it's in there today, too? Yeah. Okay. I have it from last, last week, um, or last meeting. Um, so uh, did we have, we had a second from mm -hmm. Hannah. Yes. Um, any further discussion on that? Okay. All those in favor of amending our policy to? Aye. 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 Oh, aye. 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 Okay. So that passes. Um, okay, so next up we have um, discussion regarding the flag policy. Um, and just for those of you who are here in, in the audience, the board will have some time to discuss, but we also, before any vote is taken, we can open the floor up again for public comment if you'd like to say something. Um, so, uh, board members, <laughs> we, um, we have the flag policy that, again, this was a request from Lane after um, consulting with the lawyer and also um, after our own consultation with the lawyer, um, the policy that was drawn up. And I'm curious, uh, we have some further discussion or if uh, board members have concerns regarding it. Do we have we, a lead? Do you want to no. It's no, it's no, public this is public, public discussion. Um, we will be, um, voting on this today. Go ahead, Hannah. Thanks. Um, I have spent a lot of time thinking about this policy. Um, I have done reading and research, and I don't speak lawyer, um, but I, what is your name again? I'm sorry. Uh, Joseph. Joseph. I, my understanding of the decisions um, mirror yours uh, in, in what the justices were actually saying and that it differs on school policy. But ultimately, that is not the reason that I cannot vote for this policy. I, can't, I, I, I cannot in good conscience vote for a policy that will lower that flag. I fear it will cause irreparable damage to an already damaged 
culture in the school. Um, I, in thinking, I'm going to battle a little bit. No, that's fine. Absolutely. No, nope, we've have got to. plenty of time. Let's. Uh, we need to hash this through. That's so totally okay. In in coming to that conclusion, I found myself having um, a parallel thought process to what I thought in what I'll call the Chick-fil-A conversations in that there's this um, this kind of concept being thrown around that if something is political, it shouldn't be touched at school. Putting value on lives that have historically, systemically, and are currently being devalued in everywhere, but also specifically in this school, is not political. I liken it to the Chick-fil-A controversy because <clears throat> my existence, my wife's existence, and the existence of the children that we share together is not political. And so, the school making a decision to not entertain a fundraiser. I know I'm getting off topic, but they were really parallel thoughts that would financially benefit a corporation that actively works and funds efforts to <laughs> deny basic human rights is not political. Um, it is it is taking the responsibility of the safety and education and the um, making a safe education accessible for everyone. Um, but I'll get off the Chick-fil-A thing and I'll go back to the flag policy and just end um, by saying I, it, it's not necessarily slowing down. I, I, I think because it's so um, current uh, and clearly uh, here that uh, we, we need to be talking about it now, but I, I can't vote for this policy. I, I am interested in continuing to talk about it, um, seeing if there are <coughs> other, um, other avenues to take um, but 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 the fear of litigation can't can't get me to to vote for that policy. That's it. Thank you for listening. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else having having thoughts that they'd like to share or, or concerns or? would be important to wait and do a little more research mm -hmm. instead of pulling the trigger and voting on this tonight. Okay. That's my thoughts. Mm -hmm. So um, are there, um, because we, we have moved fairly rapidly yeah. and we've heard from Lane and his his reasoning for why he wanted us to create the policy. Yeah. And we've heard from our district lawyer um, in terms of the two options that we could take. Um, however, we have, it sounds like you're hoping that maybe we slow down, maybe get some more information, or are you just or are you feeling like maybe we have the information that, or that there's no way we can have a flag policy? Are you ready to, like, do you want to re-look at the flag policy? Is that I, sort I of don't what you're think thinking? it's impossible to have a flag policy, and I've been reading a lot of flag policies, <laughs> and some of them have really good nuggets. Um, mm -hmm. I, and I don't think it's impossible I do um, 
I would prefer to postpone the vote. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I do have a couple of comments just because you're, you're potentially putting me in an area of conflict with your own policies. Um, to start, just a, a matter of clarification, the Boston flag case um, didn't start out about free speech. It started out about a fight between uh, a Christian organization wanting to fly a Christian flag in Boston. And the issue was um, not about is the flagpole uh, a forum for free speech, but is the state, by flying that flag, espousing a religion which is prohibited under the Constitution? And the Supreme Court justices three months ago looked at that and in their comments said, you have a bigger problem here. The bigger problem here is that you are, if, if a private organization has put a flag up, you have established it as a forum for free speech and you will have to accept all other flags. So they brought it up on their own because that was not the, the, the tenor of the case that, that, that where things started. Um, and then, like I said, and like people have said tonight, it was a 9-0 vote. They were pretty unequivocally clear. So let me finish. Um, the two pieces where you are potentially putting me in conflict with your own policy. I have a policy um, that I have to follow that says I will protect the district from liability. Right now, that Supreme Court ruling has already happened a month earlier than it was supposed to. Right now, we are in a state of liability. If anyone comes in and wants to put up the flag, I can say no, and we can get sued and have to go down that path and lose at the end. I am also charged under the executive limitations of protecting the di district's image. And the last thing that I want to do is be put in a position where I have to put up a flag that is morally repugnant to the majority of the community. And given the state of divisiveness, not just here, but across the country, it is highly likely that a group out there that opposes the BML flag will purposely choose something that is morally repugnant to make a statement against BLM. That is the position I am in. So I don't, it is the board's prerogative. I'm not trying to, to, to change minds at all. But what I am saying is that you will need to help me out if you delay by considering changing those executive limitations so that I am not in violation of them. This was the reason that I brought this flag policy up in 2019, um, was because it was putting me in conflict, um, and it is putting me in conflict again. But rest assured, um, given the divisiveness that is out there, we may be forced to put up a flag that will counteract any good works that were done in terms of, uh, of raising BLM. And it's not about BLM. It would have been true if it was the, the Jolly Roger. It would have been true if it was the rainbow flag. We would be in the same boat. In any process, in talking with the, the, the lawyers, and talking with the legal team, this was not pulled out of, out of a hat. People have discussed, and the board has actually considered this for four meetings now. Um, it is not a process that determines whether or not that is a forum for free speech. It is the simple allowance of the hanging of a non-governmental flag. So whatever process you go through, as, as well-intentioned as they are, in the end, we could potentially be placed in a position to have to fly a flag that, that either doesn't support our ends or our mission, or, or is, is morally and, and socially repugnant. So just I want to throw that out there because this is a weighty decision. Um, and I'll support the board in, in whatever it does, but the one piece that will need to happen is some, at least some consideration not put me in a conflict. I have a question. Um, so what are other area schools doing? Uh, other superintendents, and I can share some emails, yeah. have reached out to me going, yep, we're in the same boat. We need to make these considerations too. Okay. Which other districts? And are there policies? I can, I'm sorry. I there... can shoot you a couple emails at the end. I've got them in a file. Okay. Um, and are their policies the same as what this policy is? There are a that few schools trying? out there that have the original policy that, that uh, folks considered, which was here is a process that can allow the board to say yay or nay. 
But I think the crux of it, especially after the finalization of this vote, and you know that might be worthy of further discussion, discuss that again with Pietro, um, is if we go with the, the, the weaker policy, does that still put us in the same boat once we fly a flag? I believe it does from my understandings and the folks that I have spoken to. Um, but that would be a worthy question of Pietro. I think the reason that Pietro gave you the second policy um, was because he recognized that the first one wasn't going to protect the district as much as it could. May I ask a question? Sure. The, the free speech argument, there are restrictions when it comes to schools, right? If it's disruptive to learning mm -hmm. or disruptive to the safety of, and if it's obscene, and if it, so if the process has to do with identifying whether or not it meets that criteria for this district, then, and it's found that something repugnant is by, uh, uh, doesn't violate free speech because it fits into one of those categories, then wouldn't we be protected? I think it's a little bit different. Um, and again, this is a good question to ask the lawyer. That flagpole is not necessarily a representation of the, of the, the school. It is a representation of our government. You alter that when you place a private flag on there. When you place a private flag that, regardless of the process that's been gone through to put it up there, it is now open for anyone to use, just like a bulletin board, you know, standing on the corner um, that, that people post things on. Um, but again, it's a worthy question of asking. That's my understanding, um, but it, those are the questions that I, I would ask. Right. I'm also interested in asking Pietro about the, I think this is what it's called, qualified immunity for you, if you were to make the decision to say no. I've already had to make the decision to say yes. Right. Yeah. Yes, but so, but that you making a decision based on your belief that the, the raising of a certain flag would meets the policy. Disrupt, meets the, meets the policy. Well, and yeah. My belief, though, is, is based on your policies. Say it again, I'm sorry. My belief in, in how I act is based on your policies. That's the reason I went to the board, you know, four years ago or whenever, whenever it was, was because there was no policy that really addressed this clearly. Because with items of controversy, I could argue both sides and, and be reasonable, right? And so that was why the policy was so important. So I have no guidance now. Um, so the best I can do is follow up on the two that I have that seem to most apply, and that's no liability, protecting the image. Mm -hmm. When are we allowed to talk? Uh, when the board finishes their discussion. Uh, I have uh, one more question. Mm -hmm. So um, if, it's, if we're honoring our government's flags out front and we're voting on that, is it possible to, um, you know, compromise and allow students to fly their flag somewhere else besides out front? Well, like I said, it, it's a little bit different. If a student comes in wearing a Black Lives Matter t-shirt, that's an expression of free speech. And the only time within a school district that I can interfere with that is if it's disruptive or if it's profane. So they would still have the ability to do that. Um, I'm not sure if I answered the question. I apologize. I'm trying to put the pieces um, together. I guess what I'm asking is, so I understand the policy holds that we just fly the government flags out front, but could we compromise and allow these groups and these students to have another place to put their flags if they wanted to? Possibly. Yeah. Because I think... Um, making a compromise. Yeah, I'm not in disagreement with, with, with be, that at all. So what if... Helpful. Okay, sorry. But that would be, that's a question for... But wouldn't any people. other okay. space then be subject to this well, free speech? I'm just trying to understand. Uh, it becomes problematic, I would think, if it's, po if it's flown in the classroom on the wall. Um, I'm not 100% sure. Um, again, a flagpole is a, is a different kind of animal because with those government flags up there, it is an extension of the government, right? And the government is not allowed to espouse one thing over another. 
So as long as you're reserving it for governmental communication, we don't run into this issue. But the second we put up a flagpole and allow people to post on it, that governmental piece goes away. It is now a private bullet. It's not a bullet anymore. So we could put up like a clothing, like a clothesline, and that would not be considered? Those are questions for the lawyers. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. I can give you my opinion, but I may, may very well be wrong. So. But like I said, if a student came in wearing a, you know, wear, wearing a shirt or wearing a hat, um, and again, as long as it's not disrupting the school process and as long as it's not profane, then that's their free speech rights to do so. And who makes the decision about whether or not it's disrupting? It's usually pretty cut and clear. And if, what if, if what if, there, if if there's a riot going on in the school about it? That's pretty disruptive. And and what if it is um, something that is offensive to another student or almost in some ways threatening so to just like the student. let's go brandon chant that's when i go and i talk to the lawyer i did talk with the legal team before i made any decision about let's go brandon i did talk with the legal team before i made any decision about chick-fil-a most of them are pretty obvious um the the let's go brandon was pretty obvious but i still check mm -hmm. So I just want to make sure I'm clear. So it sounds like we still want to have those conversations with the lawyer before we vote on this, or did I miss the boat here? Sounds like you have some good questions. Somebody would have to move on how to proceed, yeah. what you want. Yeah. We have a motion. Yeah. And then you'd have to have a people agree. <clears throat> but recognize in the interim, we might get that request. Yeah. And I'm going to have to honor it if somebody comes in and wants a flag up. So I have a couple questions. The Black Lives Matter flag, where is it? Because I was just out there looking around at the flags, and all I could see was the American flag and the Vermont flag kind of smushed on one flag. It's in the pole. green, like in that green, like right when right. you pull in. It's right. I had a flag. separate flag pole put in to help oh. portray the, the flag. So, would it make sense to create a space? somewhere that is dedicated to flagpoles and there's the Vermont flag and the United States flag and then there is the free speech flag where the Black Lives Matter flag can fly with a policy and then people can apply for it with a time limit on it like now I'm getting into the details in the weeds a little bit but I mean I feel like this group has put so much work into it in the social racial justice class you know, it might be worth some of the school board members going and sitting in on that class and listening. You know, none of us have done that, or at least I haven't. Have any? Has anyone else? I, think so. I mean, out of respect for the process and the work that's been put into that, it seems like it would be a good idea. Given the huge sort of <coughs> outcry and all of the um, different perspectives that come to the table, doing the easiest thing might not necessarily be the best thing, but spending some time and some effort and some money on creating a space where students can have free speech for very important topics such as this is necessary somewhere in the learning process for all students, I think. So, I mean... I could make a motion <laughs> to put it off or not. I hear Lane, I hear the, um, the legal sort of ramifications for not following the, leaving yourself open for whatever. What did you just say? For litigation. Litigation. For litigation. Um, so I hear that that could be a problem, but it seems like there could be a little bit more thought put into it out of respect for the people who have put so much into creating this space to be heard. I think something that I just want to recognize from our previous meeting and, and hearing from students is that we currently fly the BLM flag and yet we heard from a number of students um, in minority last time who are still facing um, racial slurs, hearing it in the hallways, having 
that encountering that still in a space so I think outside of the idea of flying this flag we have to be very mindful that we can't just fly a flag as a symbol we have to be still maintaining that that is a you can't call something a safe space without making sure it's an actual safe space for students and I think that we heard that last time that there are students here who do not feel safe who are having words thrown at them or having actions towards them and so regardless in my mind of what happens here today with this flag we just we really have to and I know the work is being done but just recognize that there are students who don't feel safe in the school who have who are still hearing words even with a flag flying and what are we going to do as a school community to to really make sure that those students I know I guess are not experiencing that my question is is there spaces in the school where these conversations can happen in a very sort of open and safe way? I mean, I don't know who to address this to. Maybe to Katie or, or Nina? They're here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say that our advisory holds a lot of those tough conversations. Um, and we do a lot of work, you know, establishing norms at the start of the year. We have classroom norms that are in our curriculum handbook that all teachers use. Um, and we do that also through, you know, our Socratic seminars in English and social studies classrooms. Um, so through a variety of ways, we try to, you know, we try to create that space and that structure that's so necessary to allow students to see, you know, civil and respectful discourse model for them and to engage in that work and practice it um, in safe ways. And then we scaffold toward more difficult conversations. And I would say that, you know, the Racial Justice Student Alliance group has been doing a lot of that work too. We've also had another project-based learning challenge in other years focused on restorative practice and justice um, and that's also where we've done a lot of facilitation work so you know it's definitely been a, a professional development emphasis of ours too to focus in on equity work through the work that Emily has led from her role in foundation work um, as well as you know professional development that's just focused on facilitation and, and you know for teachers to gain confidence and for students to gain confidence in you know leading meetings and then scaffolding more toward leading discussions that are more controversial or you know more more difficult to have so I'm wondering if the flag policy passes as it's written if there is another space in the school where this sort of like Black Lives Matter theme or um, you know visual to all students sort of in a front and center kind of place that's not a flagpole that could be an alternative space for this kind of expression. I thought that's why they had another flagpole out there. Was well, for... you, you know, actually, Chelsea may be making a good point. Um, and I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to say that like it sounded like it was a surprise because you make very ma many good points. Um, things change when it's not the flagpole. If it's if, if we check with the legal team, if something is done within the school district, it's kind of like the student wearing the flag, right? Um, you know, if you open up a, a space within the school for free speech, you know, you're potentially looking at you know the same problem as the flagpole. But I might then have the ability to say, no, that is profane. No, um, that one is going to be disruptive because it's of the way that it's going to make people feel. It's going to make them feel anxious. And if they're anxious, they can't engage in the work that they need to at the school. So do you see the difference? Because it's not a flagpole, because it's a part of the school where this happens. It might, I don't want to call it a loophole, but again, it would have to be a discussion with the lawyers to be able to say, oh, does this now fall under the stricter definition of free speech that schools can put on couldn't put on students if we do this in a different lo locale? I don't know the answer to it, but I, am I making sense? Mm -hmm. um, that might be a possibility. Um, I mean, how would the racial justice class feel about that? Like you defeated? 
I know it's not, I don't think it's time to talk, but I think it's really important to continue these discussions, and these are the discussions I was waiting for in my letter to you. Um, I think we just need to slow down and like figure it out before we do something that that shouldn't be done. Um, I invite you to come in and discuss this with the class and they are they are brilliant. They have so many ideas. They have so many experiences to share. I come in and talk about all of this, everything that has was mentioned tonight. And, and let's just get together and figure it out together. And let's not just bring racial justice. Let's like have a community outside a, a circle with other kids that are opposed to the flag. Like let's listen. Let's listen to, to all of the kids and all of the um, thoughts that are out there before we come to a decision is what I'm asking. I think it's brilliant. It's a good idea. I want to I want the board to sort of think back because we did this we have been talking about this for a while and we 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 didn't really look at a modified flag policy we sort of chose to go with a more strict one with this new case having been decided with other districts that are I'm, I'm assuming may have the flags up lane, is that correct? Um, I hadn't really thought about um, just sort of, and I'm assuming, Lane, that you've been sort of the VPA has been, uh, or the <laughs> The, 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 the responses school, talk, talk with your legal. Their response is just, so, talk with your own legal. yeah. And I know the state, I know the legislature was looking at whether or not they would just pass a law, but I don't think that passed at this point. Just it saying, hasn't been up for a vote yet, I don't think. No, uh, I don't think it's they're talking on the of, mascot side. Uh, but I think, oh, I think I the flags are involved in that too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but I thought it, I thought it didn't make it out of committee. Did it make it out of committee? I think it was wrapped into that mascot. <laughs> I read today that the National School Board is needing to, to um, come up with some kind of policy too. So maybe that's something that you could wait for. Um, they're going to come out with guidance around this. Because mm -hmm. so I'm sure, I mean, across the country, there are probably other schools grappling with this. So how do we, how do you how do you manage this? Um, and again, due to what's been happening in the courts and given the courts uh, leaning but it did seem like Pietro had a second possibility whether or not we want to maybe now that we've, we've come to the point of having to actually make a decision do we want to do we want to compare policies okay this is this one here's one that maybe tries to figure out a way to have government speech. So Lamoille and Montpelier no, so far. We had to. We had to. They're having the same discussion. Yeah, we just talked about them. We can see it. They're having the same discussion. Voted, but they have. I have not kept up with them. I don't meet with them <coughs> until um, the first Friday in June. We can read okay. minutes. They were sending, they were asking questions about what we were talking about and whatnot because it sounds like they were getting prepared to have some of the same discussions. Which, which district was that? Um, Montpelier and Lamoille. Oh, okay. I think something that, that uh, is a concern for, for me in the current climate of how things are, are happening right now is that whatever happens, I'm just concerned that it's going to be seen as like a win or loss mm -hmm. for. And I don't know what that would, what the outcome of that would be. Mm -hmm. um, and so that that is a that is something that's giving me a little bit of a pause in the sense of I don't want to either add any. I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to add fuel to either side. 
I don't want to say side either because I don't I don't want to make it seem like sides but unfortunately I think this has become a it has taken that form in some ways um, so it, it is just help it, it is just making me pause a bit on how to do this in a mindful way so I guess it seems I mean, what I'm hearing is that no one's ready to pull the trigger and be like, this is, I believe in this wholeheartedly. I think this is going to be great. I think we need to put it off a little bit. You should form a subcommittee. You'd have to make a motion, and then you should yeah. form a subcommittee if that's the intent to do that study. So I, I was going to say, I move to create a subcommittee to further the conversation on the flag policy. on establishing a flag policy. I second that. Okay. Any additional discussion on that? I will volunteer myself <laughs> since I moved to make that motion to be part of that committee. I'm happy to be part of it as well. Okay. I would like to as well, yeah, but I, I think we have to put, like deal with the motion. Right. Oh, yeah, right. sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I jumped ahead. <laughs> so, Do you uh, want to just Hold on, before we yeah, the motion, sure. do you want to include names in your motion just to make it easier? And you have to outline what the charge is. Yeah. yeah, we have to right. do that secondly. Okay, sure. Okay, so are we ready to, to uh, take a vote on the motion to create a subcommittee to sort of investigate a little bit further flag policy before we make a full board decision? All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? I would ask you to make a motion to hold me harmless. Because again, executive limitations um, compel me to act, at least until a decision is made. So in other words, I, I leave things alone um, until the board makes its decision, I'm going to be held harmless for whatever comes because of that. Because again, I, right now I'm in a con I'm I'm in a state of conflict between what the board has put down in writing that I must follow and the decision that's being made. I'm not in I'm not negative about your decision. I think it's a good one, but I, I am in an odd place. If that makes sense. Would it be helpful and to be mindful about a timeline for this committee to? I may have somebody in my office tomorrow saying I want to put up the whatever. The only flag that I can prevent being put up that there's any statute for is the Confederate flag. That's the only flag that there's a statute that the Supreme Court's made decision on that I would be al allowed to refuse. Were I will there, always check there... with Pietro before making a decision. Right. But before the Black Lives Matter flag went up, <coughs> the board had given, given the didn't. administration the ability to, to um, create its own sort of procedure for doing it. Some of that started before my time, because um, we were going back four years. Mm -hmm. um, the reason for asking for the policy was because it was unclear. And I kind of mentioned this when we, we started this discussion about, about four months ago. What, the other thing that I'm charged with is reasonably interpreting. This was an issue of controversy with good points on both sides, so I could have reasonably interpreted it both ways. We're back to this is a little bit more cut and dry. There's been a Supreme Court case that says there's going to be potentially negative outcomes depending upon the decisions that I make. So I have to fall back on your other policies, which are protect the district from liability, protect the district's image. So it's a... It's well, a there's it's also a, a required harassment policy. I mean, but if, there's if a weird... you allowed somebody to put some 
horrific flag there, there, there's up. A, there's a and weird... I was a student, I would go and complain and say, I feel harassed, I feel unsafe, you've allowed this, it's against the school's harassment policy, no? Wouldn't that? There I mean, is, but I'm not sure how that applies to this. You, on the one hand, or I, I am being charged with protecting the district from liability, which means I would have to accept a negative derogatory flag to put up there. And if I did that, I would now be in violation of the policy to require me to protect the district's image. You have a contradiction here for me. I, when could we talk? Are we allowed? Because there are uh, parts of our policy that stop flags to go up on on the flagpole because of liability against harassment and bullying in the school. But the, the, the court has made clear this is a free speech issue, and free speech can be derogatory and... Again, so I get the harassment, harassment piece. But again, the flagpole is, is a, a completely separate issue in terms of what goes up and, and what not. I, I, honestly, if I make it, I'm, I'm having a hard time making it clear. I know what I mean to say, but... I think that we should talk, well, not we, because I'm not on the school board, but I think the school board needs to talk to Pietro because I'm, last time I checked, if someone wanted to put, we weren't allowed to just go and put that flag on the flagpole. There was a lot of work through a process and through a protocol um, to get that up there. And it started in 20, at the end of 2018. So you were actually our superintendent. And, and with the administration, it took almost a year to get that flag up through the okay of everybody on the admin so it, it it wasn't just thrown up there it i was, was i was pulled in about halfway through um, i remember coming in and i remember sitting down um, for the first time but did you guys talk with legal counsel yes did elijah talk with legal counsel yes. because yes, i can did. i can tell you that the legal legal advice that i got when it first landed on mine was do not do it Okay, well that's because for these very reasons. I actually have a timeline written out and I will send it to all of you. But it's still, the board's made a decision, which I think is a good one. I'm still stuck in a state of contradiction. I cannot enforce both of those and follow both of those policies because they directly contradict each other. If I don't put up a derogatory flag, the district can be sued, so I'm violating a policy. If I refuse to put it up, or if I, so then if I have to put it up, um, then I'm violating the policy about protecting the district's public image. The thing is, you don't have to put it up. You could say no because then I of get the sued. harassment policy. And then you, I, Again, you get, I, I understand your passion. <laughs> this isn't about passion right now. This is about facts. But they, I, I'm get, you need to sit in my role for a while and manage these things and things will become a little bit And you need to come and sit in my classroom yeah, exactly. and listen I to have our been, okay, Every okay. time that folks have asked me to be there, okay. I have been there. You have only invited me once. Okay. Um, so, Lane, I'm a little, con where, where in the policy, I see the liability part in our policies. Is there one of the ones that we we just did I think it was about a month ago there's there's a responsibility for me to protect the district can we make a motion would it be protective if we said like nothing at this time like nothing is allowed to go up or come down off that flagpole until a decision is made on the flag policy would that be a protective yeah Ju I, I'm just asking for until you guys figure this out relieve me from the burden of those two but I'm on saying, this specific issue, but I'm saying, not on all issues. No, no, I'm saying if, if, if a motion like that is made, is that protective? Like if we say, you know, the board makes a motion that nothing goes either onto the flagpole or comes off of the flagpole. The Supreme Court has decided you already have a flag on the flagpole that opens it up to be so that would be a we would be someone would be able to negate somebody that. can still challenge it and it's a it's a liability so all i'm asking is that for this specific issue abolish those those two limitations for me so i'm not in a state of conflict so the your that's, that's under, under asset, asset protection, protection number, number four, four unnecessarily, unnecessarily expose the organization, organization its board or its staff to claims of liability so that's, that's the, the first, first. But, but it's, it's the uh, uh, image one is in an odd place, place. Um, but it was in one of the ones that we covered. I have to protect the district's image. 
I guess I'm not understanding what, what does that mean and what would you do in that moment? Like what would, what would happen? Somebody comes in and says, I want to put up, uh, I want to put up the KKK flag. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if I tell them no, we're now a state of liability. If I put it up, I've now violated protecting the district's image. So what do I do? But I think that's the question is, like, is that what we're risking right now? But again, you, you have to separate your decisions from the charges through policy that you have laid on me. If I do not follow those policies, um, anyone who gets upset at me can then say Millington was insubordinate because he didn't follow our policies. I do not want any of that. But we're, but, I'm not trying to be like, but we're your boss. So if we say that, right? I mean, we are You speak to me through your policies. Right. Your policy governance. Yeah, I'm not trying to be difficult. No, I'm not trying to be difficult either. I'm trying to see if we can get to a place where we can like move forward to even have a discussion of a subcommittee. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. I know he's pretty good about the words, but not exactly where. Okay, so so the policy is under asset protection, and we've got he's limited in that he can't unnecessarily expose the organization its board or its staff to claims of liability that's number four number nine is endanger the organization's public image its credibility or its ability to accomplish ends so those are the two under asset protection that we've sort of we've and he's interpreting it, and if I remember correctly, so your interpretation of this is that if you um, have this flag flying, or you, um, if you don't allow, you don't allow a flag to fly, then, then you would be opening up the district to liability. So in your rationale, or your interpretation is that means I need to fly any flag. So, so but it's, it's, it's if, if whatever choice, choice I make, it violates one or the other. Mm -hmm. Right, that's the right, problem. you're, right. Um, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. well, yeah, yeah I'm, maybe. maybe. I don't know, I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know. But, but I, I, I found, found where your, what, what your, what, what your concern, concern is and, and where you're at. at. Um, and I do not want to be in a position that anyone now or forever in the future can come back and say, I was this I wonder if I could give Pietro a call now. Maybe we can go into executive. Well, we can't do that because it's not on the agenda, right? Or can, could we? You're talking about the call. I don't know. I doubt he'd be available. Yeah. Because that's another option. If we could. Because it's, it's I'm not a lawyer. I, you know, I'm hearing a lot of people throwing around legal stuff, but, um, and we did hear from Pietro, and, um, you know, we all met with him, and correct me if I'm wrong, but we sort of decided we would do one type of policy over another. We didn't actually have him write up two different options. And what, and what I'm hearing, hearing now is several, several board, board members are feeling a little uncomfortable with just moving quickly through to just go with that, that one more straightforward policy. Um, so we have enough questions for legal counsel. Right, right. right. And, and then things, things that come up, and especially since there had been, been no court, court case that was decided before we yeah. moved yeah. forward. So, so perhaps. perhaps yeah, there's an emergency. Yeah, at the, the same, same time. time. Right. right. We, we kind of need to move fairly quickly, quickly but, but we also, and, and, I'm, and, and I'm hearing, hearing your concern, concern, and it is in our policies, and it's your interpretation, and again, who knows, given sort of the climate, what, what will happen. Um, so, so I'm going to come back to so remember uh, where we were. We had decided that we would create a subcommittee to do some research um, to come up with this. I'm wondering if, again, given Lane's concerns, do we want to 
um, rather than do that, do we want to um, have a special board meeting, be able to go in an executive session with our council and come up with some really kind of hash it out with someone with the legal expertise in education law to help us through? Yes. Yeah. I'm wondering what folks are thinking. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
the flagpole until, until we, we get, get a flag, flag policy, policy in place. Okay. So, I do think we would. I feel like, like we, we would qualify, qualify for emergency meeting. Under the, the you've found that. that perfect. Um, um, so, so we're, we're ready, ready to, to vote on holding him harmless. Uh, on, on, that, that, on, on the motion, motion from, from Hannah. Hannah. Aye. Uh, Aye. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, okay. okay, so, so that, that passes. passes. Um, we, we have created, created a subcommittee to, to, to start, start researching, researching this. Katja has, has figured, figured out that, that we can hold an emergency meeting. meeting. Do th I do think, I'm not going to say it. I do think, I do think reading this. Okay. okay. Emergency, emergency, meeting, emergency, meeting, emergency, meeting, emergency meeting may be held, held only when necessary to respond to unforeseen occurrence or condition requiring immediate attention by the public body. Yeah. yeah. It, it sounds, sounds like, like if we, we were in a position, position where we could consider the potential face of the lawsuit, it, it would, would be requiring immediate attention. Yeah. Do we have to wait for? Does there have to be a suggestion that for a flag that plain? says no to to qualify for that urgent meeting. I think because, because right, right now the situation is really could potentially face litigation. Yeah. That's yeah. considered yeah. urgent yeah. Ever since that Supreme Court case was decided here, that's just And it may be held without public, public announcement, announcement, without posting of notices, notices and without speaking for our members to numbers, numbers provide some public notice there as given as soon as possible for any such event. Yeah. So you guys want to decide when you're doing it? I think we need to talk to so, so yeah, we, we would have, have to arrange really to connect with Teresa. Um, and I can call, we can call a recess, right? Yes. A five minute recess, and I can call him and see when he's available. And then this. Okay. So I'm going to call a five minute recess. So I can call Pietro and see if he might be available or the soonest that he might be available for an emergency meeting. Is that everybody okay? Good with that? Okay. And the other piece is uh, you could, I can be there or not be there. I don't know if my being there would be a value. Well, but you can, I'm, ha I'm happy to do whatever the subcommittee decides. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So five minute recess. You can use the bathroom. <laughs> so um, we're back from our recess. I don't know if it was actually five minutes or not, but I didn't time you, don't worry. <laughs> Good. Um, felt like five minutes to me. Um, so Pietro was not available. Was my phone going off at all? No. no. Um, so we'll sort of, I've, I've left him a message to get in touch with me. Um, we know we can do an emergency meeting. Um, we have this subcommittee which might not even be created but it may it not necessarily be emergency meeting emerg right if we can do an emergency meeting are our folks fairly open um can or can folks be fairly yeah. open mm -hmm. tomorrow yes uh, tomorrow evening if we can't get early morning maybe do the work day. Of You're out of town tomorrow night. Everyone for the uh, board, the whole board, if we're doing an emergency meeting. Is it a quorum? It has to be a yeah. quorum. You could call in if you're, or you might not be. You're in a. <laughs> Where I'm going, there is no Wi Fi or electricity, oh, nothing. I to go where you're going. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. um, would you feel horribly if we did an emergency meeting if we had a quorum? Like that? It would be fine. Okay. All right. Are folks okay with that? I can't do it. You can't either. Are you okay with? Would we have a quorum? One, two, three, four, five, six. We'd still be okay. Yeah, because five. Six right? said two out. Five, five is the quorum. Five is the quorum. Five is majority. Yeah. Are you okay with that? Did you? Maybe you can just hear me. Yeah. If, yeah. If he's not available. Um, oh, I, I bet, I bet he'll. You think so? I think he'll make some time. Um, 
Well, I think it sounds like now we just need to wait for Pietro to decide the next steps. But do we need to still name a subcommittee, or are we just going to jump to an, an emergency, emergency meeting of the board over this topic? I feel like if we have a subcommittee, then that's a meeting, then we have another meeting with right. the board. Right, right. If you're all there, you can vote right then and there if you make a decision. Yeah, I, right. I feel like right. I feel like the next rational step is just to get Pietro and have us meet as soon as we can with him. <laughs> okay. Like, do I ever send my my subcommittee motion? <laughs> I don't know. Like, what if? Can you let me read the motion back to us that we voted on? You can um, make another motion to 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 overrule it. Right. So, do we do somebody want to make that motion? I make or a motion. Okay, you're going to miss. disregard the subcommittee until further notice or after we have held our 24-hour emergency meeting regarding the flag policy. Okay. Do we have a second on that? Second. Seconded by Chelsea. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. So, we're our our big thing is going to be. I will try and be in touch with Pietro, and as soon as possible, we'll set up an emergency meeting. Hopefully, we can do it tomorrow. Um, otherwise, I'll I'll see the earliest that he's available, and I'll let you all know. Um, and hopefully, we can make this happen. He, it might be easy if he can um, come in through Google. Are people okay with mm -hmm. him connecting yeah, with us through uh, Google, uh, Google version? Mm -hmm. call? Yeah, so if it's during the day, I can make it, but okay. after five, I can't. Okay. I do have a webinar, I'm just realizing, for the school board. Those get recorded. Is it a required one, or because um, they? It's for new board members, is and it's the second part. I just I did the first part last week, and it's from five to seven. But I mean, if it's an emergent meeting, right? Right. I mean, right. I think you could ask them be, too. You might be yeah, able to I get a recording them. of it. Okay. Um, yeah. I'll I would just ask it. Carrie Lamb, who's who okay. does all of that. She does the logistics for the BSBA. Okay. Thanks. And she she might be able to just get you a recording. Okay. I just have one thought. I've, mm -hmm. I've, I've had a lot of thoughts actually. Um, but policies can be amended, mm -hmm. and we need a policy, and we have a policy that we've worked on for four months with our attorney, mm -hmm. based on choices that we made and guidance that he has given us already, and. I worry about leaving here without a policy in place to protect our schools and our community. Those are my thoughts. And do you see the one that has been proposed as the only option? For it, it, the only option for it right now, to have a policy in place right now, I do see it as the only option. Because I think to craft a different policy, we need more guidance from our local council. And I worry about that as well, given the chatter, that if we do not have something in play, we're going to be faced up with Flying the Chick Fil A flag, <laughs> but if we made a decision tonight, there would be far more than just chatter of us holding off. You know, it could be be pretty detrimental if a flat decision was made tonight. Wouldn't we agree on that? Without having some questions answered. Do you want to potentially bankrupt the district? Unfortunately, any decision I think. Yeah, is we're between a rock and a hard place. And this is, this is not a new, a new topic for us. This is something that we've mm -hmm. discussed and considered several times. So to get this far in, a, in, in policy making and have a lot of second thoughts, I don't think it's wrong. I think it's, it's important that we've considered things carefully. 
<laughs> so I'm, I've heard from some folks hearing um, it is, I mean, it is uh, difficult. We could have an emergency meeting. Our emergency meeting could be, okay, we went with this policy. How can we, can we amend it so that, or what would an amendment to this look like and, and look at the legal ramifications of that? Um, I, I actually, I, I would love to hear if you're comfortable from our administrators about what I think some of our concern is what would the ramifications be either side, right? So yeah. I'm just curious what you're hearing or seeing or what the, what, what's happening on the school level regarding, amongst the students regarding this issue. <coughs> Um, it's it's challenging. I think our students, um, you know, most of the students who are aware that this is happening are students who um, either have parents who are really passionate um, and involved on social media, or um, were were students who are involved with the racial justice um, class. And so they're invested um, because they went through the process to raise the Black Lives Matter flag. And this is a really, I think, hard lesson in the ways that the world can work for them. Um, so that feels hard. Um, and then the whole Chick-fil-A piece felt hard for a number of students. Um, but in general, most of them are, are doing school. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's a fair characterization. You work more with older students who I think are more involved. I'm usually more immersed with middle schoolers who, we have a dance coming up on the 20th <laughs> and that is the big news right now. So, um, <laughs> but. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say that the students in the older grades are, are closer, you know, to the work of raising the flag. Um, and so, you know, we hear from alums and we hear from, you know, seniors and juniors who were involved and still are involved in, you know, what the process was and that long, hard year. Um, and we have heard, you know, a lot of what's being been discussed already today about, you know, why the process couldn't be a little slower and take into account, you know, some of what, you know, I think a lot of them are anticipating, which would be maybe like national policy that we could then draw upon to inform decision making here. Um, and so I have heard some students talk about like, well, you know, what are, what are some of the other districts doing who are in a similar position and, you know, shouldn't we be collaborating with them and wouldn't we be safe in that solidarity and collaboration to make a decision that wasn't, you know, solely and kind of unilaterally coming from the district, but coming, you know, from a collaboration and in solidarity with others who are working on the same thing. Um, so I've heard that, um, and you know I've also heard, and I think we heard last in the last forum um, some of the kind of like arguments about what this means in terms of like implication and implementation in the different school buildings, um, and I don't really know how to answer those questions. I think it's. I think it's hard to fully understand the ramifications and the implications right now because I think this decision was just handed down and so I think there are a lot of schools grappling with what does this mean, <laughs> you know, and what are those, you know, kind of invisible ramifications that we can't really forecast or predict right now. So there's, there's just unease and 
a lot of questions and not many answers. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So at this point, we have on the table um, that we're going to hold off for an emergency meeting. We've got Lane held harmless for the asset protection numbers four and nine, just in regard to the flag. We no longer have a subcommittee, but we're going to try and quickly get the board together to meet with Pietro and get some guidance in terms of um, what the ramifications are of the current Supreme Court case. Um, and perhaps we can uh, reach out to some other school districts, maybe. I don't know if that's something that the school, that the board would like to do. Um, there are only a handful of districts that fly the Black, fly, Black Lives Matter flag. Um, I don't know who all of them are. Montpelier was the first, right? Well, Montpelier the first Montpelier, school to have it go up? Burlington. I think Winooski. Winooski. I don't know the other one. Burlington, Winooski. That's it? Can only students and staff request flags, or can parents and or community members, or just is like who can ask, who can ask for a flag? We the board left that to the administration to decide. So I don't know if there is anything left from Elijah from the initial sort of flag protocols that he put forth. I I don't know. Do you have anything to work from? He left us, you know, files we can look through there if you're interested in knowing what we have. Right. Uh, did did uh, Brent have anything left? No. No. Regarding sort of his protocols for... Because <laughs> Brent was gone by the time the flag yes. went up. Yeah. Okay. Did you, did you put any protocols down for... Sort I have of no why policy you to base them on. I have to base them on a policy. So you, so you didn't even, you didn't sort of, because if I remember correctly, you had said you were fine with it as long as it didn't, didn't, it wasn't dis wasn't wasn't di disruptive. disruptive. Or, yeah, right. At the time, but so, part of the calculus was that it wasn't. To be honest, that it wasn't well known, but it was establishing it as a form for free public speech by having it up. But the Supreme Court changed that because it's now all over the national news. And we are in a time of, of divisiveness of, of people that are fighting it out on both sides of the Black Lives Matter flag, which means they're going to be more motivated to act out against it now that there's been a ruling, mm -hmm. which is why I felt it was important to kind of bring this back up at this point in time. Right. Okay. So, and then we, we did hear from Rachel just sort of expressing her concern that maybe we just rescind everything, just come back to the flag policy, and knowing that we could have an emergency meeting and, and amend it if we got word from legal counsel. Is that sort of what, I, what I'm, am I repeating here? Yeah, and thoughts? I think at that point, with a policy in place, it wouldn't have to be an emergency meeting. It would be a warning meeting. Right, at a... We have this one, which would mean the flag would, the flag would come down at least temporarily. What are I, I'm curious, sort of, what people's thoughts are in that regard? Because we also did we did pass a motion to hold Lane harmless. So, in some ways, we're we're covering that, but we could, you know, it could. Could could stir things up in terms of 
uh, tomorrow morning. Because I'm sure people will be looking to see what happened. Well, when we first started discussing this back when, I don't even remember when Brian and Ashley were still here, I was on board with two flags moving forward. We, we had m multiple meetings where we then created this, we read it, and you know, I think it's important that everyone gets to speak their opinion. And the first, like the first reading, I don't think anybody was here to speak about it. And then after that, I think I, I can't remember now. I'm combining all these meetings together with all of the people that we've had join us. But it's like we we've gone through the two readings, and no one has said anything until now, as far as the school board about changing this policy. So it's hard because, yes, I understand what all of these people are coming to us and saying, regardless of which side they're on. And again, here goes the side situation. Mm -hmm. But then it's like, we're looking at this policy and we've, we've talked as a school board about, you know, which side, you know, is, uh, you know, which way we should go with this. And as we've developed this with legal counsel, we're now kind of thinking about like, oh, okay, well, we've made one exception. If we make one exception, we have to make multiple exceptions. And then mm -hmm. if we have, if we have edits to this and we create another policy with certain, I don't know, guidelines or whatever we want to call it, we then have to have this conversation every time somebody wants to request a flag go up. So I don't even know what time it is. We've been here for hours mm -hmm. and it's like we have this policy. We've talked about it multiple times. You know, do we move forward with this? Do we move forward with the emergency meeting? But again, I think either way, people are going to be upset, as mm -hmm. most policies would be. I'm, I'm torn. Well, I just don't know which way to right. go. And right. it, it, you know? Well, you bring up a very valid point. It's, like but we have this, and this is, this is the reason why we're discussing this, is because we don't want to take up time to have right. to say yay or nay. And we shouldn't leave it up to Lane to be the one to say, Yes, this one can go up. No, this one. Like, that puts him in a horrible position. So, mm -hmm. well, so the, wanna... and administrators as well. Like, if we left it up to Lane and administrators, then what? You know, then, then they all have to say yes or no. Right. And then again, it comes back to us. So it's like, here's the policy. We've read it twice. Yes, let's vote on it. Or no, and continue this debate every time we have a request. Right. Mm -hmm. You know? Part of the discussion, too, is, and, and, you know, if other administrators want to pipe in on this because they may be experiencing something different than, than me, I spent all my time managing these things, mm -hmm. which was one of the reasons yeah. for trying to get the assistant superintendent because I can't get to the actual work of curriculum and academics. Right. And, right. Mm -hmm. and so there's, there's that aspect of it, too. If you go back to your mission statement and your ends and what you're asking me to achieve, you have to enable me to be able to achieve them. And again, I'm not opposed to the Black Lives Matter movement at all. This has nothing to do with the Black Lives Matter flag. It could have been a different flag that was up there. But it, it's an issue of controversy. You're going to have to accept the fact um, that with issues of controversy, whatever you decide, mm -hmm. all that's going to change is the group of people that are here on that. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. That's what makes them tough. And they are difficult. I, right. I don't envy you. Um, so right. I have another question. If we were to vote on this and we decided to implement this policy, is there a statement that the board can make publicly, like why Absolutely. we're doing this? Mm -hmm. And saying like, yes, you know, we support, or we want to support all of these flags that are being requested to go up at some point. But this is why we're doing this. Mm -hmm. Because I think that would be really important for our community to hear. Like, we don't want to take sides. We don't want it to feel one way or the other. We don't want it to hurt anybody's feelings. However, putting us, the administrators, Lane, in this position multiple times over and over again is not going to help anybody because we're going to just have to keep coming back to this. 
I think that would be important if we were to vote on this and it was to be put in place. And that's something future we craft. Yes. Well, and I think it's hard and that I come back to with going back and forth of this is that I think when we originally approached this, it was from, and maybe this was just my interpretation of from a, from a protective, mm -hmm. from a protective realm of we didn't want, because things were becoming divisive, we didn't want to see the potential opening up of, of what could potentially else go up or what could be damaging or anything like that. So it was, I feel like it came from this point of being protective, but it's, it's hard because I feel like it's switched to being like a punitive. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. right. yeah. like if we vote to for this flag policy, you know, I think again fundamentally it comes down to yes, this is this this lousy little flagpole is now an article of freedom of free speech, a First Amendment free speech. But the act of taking that flag down feels punitive. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I'm struggling with is, on the one hand, it seems like I, I just don't feel whether or not, it, and again, I'm not a lawyer, I don't, I don't know the specifics, but on the one hand, it feels like it's pretty black and white freedom of speech, but then on the other hand, I'm hearing from other folks who have some legal background saying, well, no, not exactly. Um, and again, when we got our, our counsel, it was prior to this decision being made. Um, so that's where I'm sort of beginning to feel a little bit like, let's not go too fast, let's, let's see what folks are saying in regard to that and it may be moving us more toward it's a little bit more black and white but most of the time when I talk with lawyers one of the frustrating things is a lot of times there's this gray and they and it's not necessarily totally this way or that way there's gray always and and that's the piece that um, I would feel very comfortable if it was agreed upon that that flagpole is definitely considered an, a public forum and everyone deserves the right to be heard and to, to state their, their views, whether I like them or not. Um, if, if that's the case, then it makes it a lot easier for me. But what I'm, the thing that I'm questioning is I, I've heard now from several people um, that 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 it may not be that clear that we have definitely opened up a public forum and uh, are other people picking that up as well or am I just misunderstanding things and again I am not a lawyer so I don't understand it Lane your per your interpretation seems pretty clear we have definitely done that um, what was what was Pietro's discussion with well, he, I remember him saying we could do a second thing where we, we map out sort of... By the measurements on it? Or, or no, that you... A that process. A process. Almost. You could create a process, and then it would be government speech, and then if somebody... So that's when you guys got into the discussion about is this what we want to be spending? Right. Our time doing, right, because then it's, then it's, um, and then that would mean you would be, you would then, when people are running for the school board, it's not going to be what's our best for it. our children and moving our district forward and producing the best education possible for our students. It's going to be which flag do you, do you want on the flagpole, which is sort of getting us all sidetracked into those sort of push button issues that are that are in unfortunately out there now so that I mean for because so I, I don't understand why we would have to be the ones making the decision about which flags would fly like wouldn't that be an admin at the administrative level no 
because would, but I think it could in a policy we could say that that's, it could but they're yeah. just going right. to appeal it to you anyway that then it would appeal to us and, and then we would be having we'd have no. complaints and they would follow the complaint procedure and <laughs> so I mean yeah. sorry I'm just thinking no no I, look, you guys are having a good discussion it's getting my brain moving which is good it's a good thing all right so what are people thinking? What are, do, are, should we stay where we are? We've we've held Lane harmless. We're trying to hold an emergency meeting. There has been talk. No one has made a motion. I think we just need to be prepared that, for what could potentially happen tomorrow. That's just my. Manage. That's just. I mean, that's my job. Okay. So, so. I do think it needs more time, and out of respect for the people who have put so much effort into that procedure the first time around and the unknowns that are coming from other school districts and on a national level and on a state level, I think those things will sort themselves out. Mm -hmm. Lane, on the state level, because I had thought, I, I talked to a legislator and, they, and he told me that it never made it out of committee. I don't think it did. Um, and one Does of the anybody reasons know? I can't anybody say know? for sure, but I, one of the reasons I think it didn't make it out of committee was because the focus ended up being on the mascot, and that's all I heard about. At the beginning, I heard about both, and I think they were kind of attached to the same discussion. Um, but after a while, as it evolved, all I heard about yeah, was the mascot. Yeah, so they've so they've left it back up to us to make a decision. Yeah, I'll offer that. I, I think um, what I understood is that some of them were waiting to see what this decision was before reintroducing mm -hmm. related uh, legislation. When you say this decision, the, the Supreme, Supreme Court? Court. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Okay. Maybe because that's going to set precedent. Would make sense. Okay. All right. So what's the board's, what, what do we want to do here? It's 8 30 almost like I said I will manage don't you don't have to worry about that I'll do, do what I we've can. made some motions and decisions are we happy with what we've decided and and I'll work with Pietro and try and get an emergency meeting as quickly as I can to get this moving and, and hopefully a decision made although again it may be a rush rush um, uh, I could also, you could direct me, or we as a board could direct Lane to get in touch with Burlington, Winooski, and Montpelier <coughs> to see what they're doing for additional information. Remember, we are, we can direct Lane to do those things if we want, to just have that as additional information when we, when we do meet. Do we have, uh, I think it would be a good idea to get that information from those other schools just to see, I mean, maybe they're in the same situation. Maybe they have an answer for being the liability piece of it. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe there's different scenarios that have played out that could possibly play out here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can, what I can do tomorrow is um, I'll reach out to uh, the Superintendent's Association and they'll send out the broadband request for information and see what we get. Okay. And then and then forward forward that to us as soon as you get it, in case we're meeting with Pietro. So you usually you usually get at least at least one or two people that will respond to the cell phone. Okay. Um, we probably for for public uh, record do we have a motion to direct Lane to reach out to the other districts in Vermont that he's aware of that are flying a Black Lives Matter flag and to the Superintendents Association to get some guidance on what what they what's what's happening with flag policies? And we have a motion for that. So so moved. So moved. From Megan, do we have a second? I second it. Seconded by Chelsea. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. All right. So it's I'm 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 getting the sense from the board that we're okay with our plan. 
emergency meeting. We're holding Lane harmless. We're directing him to get a little bit more information from the other districts in Vermont with the BLM flags and from the uh, Superintendents Association, just guidance in terms of what they're recommending, if they have any guidance. And hopefully we can meet up with Pietro soon. Okay, are we good? All right, moving forward. Uh, we are on uh, the first reading of the required state and federal policies that Lane is responsible to making sure the district has updated. Um, there were only two. I emailed a whole bunch of them. Right, right. Yeah. No, you, no, you, there were only two yeah, that I, I had questions about. Um, and this is just first reading, so mm -hmm. you want to just kind of read through and get familiar with um, his changes. But one of the things, the, the two policies regarding the board. Um, those aren't required. Those are not required. So I'm board prerogative. You guys. Yeah, and on. and I would I would encourage board members to look at our own policies because we already have policies but that totally. cover those things, yeah. so it seems redundant for us to have him have us adopt those um, from the state. So that's just my opinion. Take a look at it. We'll be looking at them again. Um, and for a second reading, remember first reading, you're just looking through and making sure they make sense, you understand them. And again, this is, um, if you look at our um, overarching policy of making sure that the district is run legally, um, Lane has to make sure that he has all of the state and federal policies that are required for school districts in Vermont to have. So that's what he's doing. He's going through and making sure they're all updated and that he has all of those required policies. And he may um, be recommending some that may not be. Are you recommending any that are not required? Uh, I, I, I can't remember uh, when I just glanced at it. I, it looked like not. No, I, the ones the ones that weren't requ weren't required. I just but they, that they made changes to. I just said board prerogative. Um, right. Yeah. Okay. You know, and if, I, if I'm saying should adopt, that's because it's it's required. Okay. Um, and then you're going to send us another batch after this batch, right? Because this is only the first batch, or are these no, you only have all, you have these, all, we have all, all the ones. All, so all, those all, are all of the ones. Yeah. Um, the only one that was a little bit quirky, so how these, these work is um, the VSBA actually hires out, usually Heather and, and Pietro, um, to mm -hmm. craft policies statewide. So they've already been vetted at that level. Um, the only one that wasn't is the condom policy that's required under law. <coughs> because the VSBA did not have one. Um, that was one that we ran through Pietro to, to take a, a look at to make sure that you know it met all the requirements and wasn't putting us in any, any more jeopardy than we had to. So that okay. one was vetted as well, just so folks are aware. So um, the equity policy that, uh, so VSBA was recommending that. Did you take a look at that one? That's not a new change. That's one that was in front of this board. So we already six, have that six one? Six months ago, and no, the board did not want to move on it. The board rejected it. The equity suggested, one? The board suggested that the students um, go back and have some community discussions about it. I don't remember that. That was a while back. I think it was at the beginning of this year. There was another policy that was associated with it um, for the teacher handbook as well. Um, but no, the board rejected them. Um, not, no, I shouldn't say rejected, but, but asked for the students to have more of a process about it. Um, even though it was the VSBA policy. I don't recall that, but it's late and my brain is full. Might be misfiring, so all right. So um, I can put that back in if folks would like to see it. Well, I I don't know. Do, in in it, light of our our flag issue and the and the ultimate concern of 
It's students. a very generic policy. It's not a strong, it's not a super controversial, but it, it, it makes some good points. So it's worth, definitely worth considering if the board's wrong. Didn't you just say that the policies that you just put forward, that I read through them and I'm not sure where they are right now, but They're, they are already covered in our policies? No, no, no. That was just the two that are in regard to the board. Oh. Because those, so we, the, the so these policy policies that we're one. looking at, so these are our board policies. These are what we function under. The required state and federal policies have a lot to do with what he has to do operationally and in terms of just running the district, their state and federal legal requirements. And we, we monitor him in making sure that he's got those and that he's following those under our global executive constraint. He can't run the district illegally. And if he didn't have those policies and follow those policies, he would be not, he would be in noncompliance to this main And that's what that policy. list is. Yes. Okay. Yes. Those are all the state and federal required policies. Yeah, they're, they're, they're board policies, but it's my, my job to make sure that you're informed of what's changed and what's not and we'll make recommendations to you on what you should adopt. And Perfect. And then he's okay. got to follow them. Yep. And make sure everyone below him is following them. The other, other component that's got to be a big focus for next year, again, if we have the time uh, to, to do it, is a lot of the, the policies is, is a board purview. Um, the, the implementation of policy is what's called protocols. There are a lot of policies that are out there that the district has historically not had full protocols for, and those need to be developed, and I need the time to get a team to together. Do that. And that's mm -hmm. probably a three-year process. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's good that these are getting updated, but I've also, again, we talk about time and where time should be spent. That's something that, that's a critical need that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. We have some, but, but, but there's a substantial number of protocols that are missing. Mm -hmm. so, so again, these policies, you're just, we're sort of, it's almost, they almost could go in consent agenda in some ways, um, but yeah. we should just be looking over them and making sure they make sense to us or if we have any questions because we need to, and, and again, in this, in the monitoring report that has to do with his, the global executive constraints, that's where we check him on it, you know. Okay. Do you have, are these policies all there? And so when he writes his monitoring re report for 2.0, he's going to say all of the required state and federal policies are all up to date. They're all on our website. They're all... They all have protocols, or they're all close to having protocols, or, or something. Working like that. Pro, working <laughs> yeah. um, so, so, um, so that's kind of, you know, these are our policies. Those, they are our policies because by state law we have to approve all of these policies. Mm -hmm. But he, he is sort of responsible for those, and we are checking, checking on him with this policy. You follow that? You I got do. it all. Okay. I got it. Cool. <laughs> All right, so, uh, and this is our first reading, so you can just take a look. And that took more than five minutes. Uh, <laughs> next up, we have the uh, tentative staff MOU agreement. Yep. So the, actually, I got an email from Nora not too long ago that said that they did have their meeting. They finally approved the support staff one that the board had approved, uh, I think it was at the last board meeting. And then they have tentatively, well, the, they have approved on their side um, the MOU that was agreed to with the subcommittee, uh, which is very similar to what the support staff uh, one. Uh, most of 90% of what's in there are things that we were already providing anyway um, at this point in time. I don't think there's anything that's going to have any significant impact on, on, on anything. Okay, so for this item, we are, are we hearing from the subcommittee that met with the professional staff and deciding if we want to take their recommendation to yep. so uh, if you, approve if, it? Or if you, if, what is the recommendation of the subcommittee? Yeah. Who was on that committee? Who? Uh, me. Me. Are we talking about the support staff? No, no. professional no. staff. The professional staff. Okay, so, so this that is the was, most recent. Yeah. Okay. So, who was on that? 
the movie. Darn. The I one we just met the other night? Yeah. 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 Just the two? There's a third one, right? No. No, oh, Chelsea, yeah. Hannah, and me. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, um, so you met. Do uh, you feel like we should move forward and, and yes. accept it? Yes, that is my opinion. Okay. It's any any questions about the the MOU from other board members? I will say it ends in when does it end? June the end of the, June thirtieth. So it's quick. Yeah. It's quick. It's a quick MOU. Yeah. Okay. Um, so is there any discussion about the MOU? I move to approve the professional staff MOU as presented by the subcommittee. I'll second. Okay. We get a second from Megan. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. So that is done. Uh, consent agenda. We have the, so again, consent agenda, this is just stuff that by law we have to approve so um, there are the minutes in there uh, administrative contracts uh, professional contracts um, and then we're also authorizing lane to sign new hire contracts um, so that he can move along in that process and not be held up by us um, having to approve it that's for after so I would that, say for now, because for now. there's a competition over staff, mm -hmm. um, if they have to wait for a month. Uh, right, to get our approval. Yeah. yeah. And you guys, yeah. it's always on the consent agenda anyway. It's not something that people usually right. think of. Right, yeah. Uh, oh, we got yeah. a question? I'm just concerned that the administrative contracts to be approved aren't in here. And I don't remember seeing them. They, they're on this, there's on this form <laughs> on the table. Thank you. Because one of them was like recent as of right. yesterday, mo yesterday, yesterday morning or last <laughs> yesterday afternoon. Sorry about that. I think I got that one. And it's all administrators in there, it, the ones oh, that have been here. But those yeah, are this some is the newest switches. one. Because it's brain tree got it. Okay. Thank you. And a new one. <laughs> okay. Oh, all right, so um, do I have a motion to accept the, uh, to approve or the so consent moved. agenda? Second. Seconded by Megan. <coughs> Any discussion? Any questions? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, superintendent's report. Most of that was the legislative piece, and we talked okay. about the we department talked one, about on that. facilities. Um, and we have all all the anybody have any concerns or issues? Need more information about what's going on from the reports? Mm -hmm. Good to go. Uh, Katya, the uh, update on the teacher appreciation that all went out, right? It all went out last week, and awesome. I think it was really successful. Yay! Great. Great. Super. Uh, so, action recap. Oh my God. <laughs> um, so, we are going to be, um, hopefully, I'll be getting in touch with Pietro. We'll be pulling together an emergency uh, meeting to um, get some more counsel on the flag policy. Lane will be getting us some additional information. Uh, from the other districts with the BLM flags and um, any any uh, words of wisdom from the superintendents association uh, and I believe June 1st yes that will be before our next meeting we will be having our policy governance training so for new board members that'll be a good review of sort of how our policies work um, I don't know if I've sent you out the same information that's got, uh, I'll have to, I'll check. I might send you some information, just some more background information that you might not have gotten. I'll check it, sorry. Uh, if I forgot, I apologize. Um, and uh, so that will be happening. I'll be in touch with you all in terms of where that will be, um, and we will have food for you. 
So <laughs> hopefully that will make it. Um, I think it's going to be a really great, um, we're going to do a, a really good self-assessment of sort of how we're operating and then look at where we need. Um, remember, we, part of what we wanted was clarification on, on sort of working with our policies and figuring out if we need to update things and how to go about doing that. So um, I think it'll be a, a really great training. And we may be doing a little bit more beyond just the June 1st. Uh, so that's an action recap, meeting eval. Um, it was, uh, the agenda was well planned to focus on the work of the board, so I give us a four. Um, the board followed its agenda and did not allow itself to get sidetracked, I think to the best of its abilities, I gave it a four. Um, the meeting was well attended, I gave it a five. The board was prepared for the meeting. I gave us a four. Um, the meeting proceeded without interruptions or distractions. There were a few little squabbles, so I gave us a three. Uh, the board's decision-making processes were understood and were implemented appropriately. I gave us a four. Uh, diversity of viewpoints were sought out, a five. Participation, a five. Listening, a five respect and courtesy, I gave us a five. There was some, maybe that should be a three, because there were some people who weren't super respectful of each other or of the institution. Work was accomplished in an atmosphere of trust and openness. I gave us a five. Okay. Yeah. Any other feedback? When timeliness was not so great, but timeliness that's not even is, on there, is tough. It? No, timeliness is tough. I mean, we make guesstimates of what, how long it's going to take yeah. to do things. Um, so, any suggestions on timeliness or how to how to do that? Katya and I, when we do the agenda, we we try to anticipate, but it's always hard to to kind of anticipate exactly um, how much discussion is going to take place. Um, I think we did a good job. I, I personally think we the, the board did a, a good job tonight really talking things through and hearing from everybody. So um, I know that's kind of hard, but I, and it does take time. So anyway. Uh, I move to exit regular meeting and enter executive session second. at 849 oh. on a student appeal on personal is personnel issue. So the student appeal is, is going to have to be rescheduled, um, but the personnel issue is what we're, we'll be entering in under. Okay. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. This is not easy work. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, uh, so we need to vote on the motion. We do. Oh, uh, I. You mo you and moved. You, and you seconded. You and seconded. seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Now we're off.